Here we have another weekly 50 photo brought to you by the Magnolia Tree. We have these, uh, these magnolia trees all over on campus, and I walk past them a lot, and they make for good photo opportunities. So the magnolia tree has, if you've never seen one, it has these big seed pods, th these red seed pods that look sort of like pine cones, but they're a lot more dense, and they're kind of heavy if you pick one up. This particular magnolia tree, not too far from my building on campus, and uh, this was in the fall, and the seed pods, the way they work is throughout the summer, they build up this this fleshy pulp around these red seeds and then in the fall the the pulp as it were sort of shrivels away and in the, in the photo that's the brown stuff you can see and the seeds end up poking out i wanted to take a picture of that when i saw it uh, because it's really cool coloring but uh, it doesn't stick around for that often so i wanted to kind of preserve it in photographic form the trick is though having a 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter lens makes a photo like this kind of difficult because you can't zoom so you have to find a low-hanging fruit, or in this case, seed pod, and work around those limitations of your lens in order to get the shot you want. So there is a couple other elements to consider for this picture as well. First, what angle to shoot it at. Do you do head-on? Do you do from the side? Do you do like a three-quarter view? Um, what do you want in the frame? So do you want the other leaves in the frame, the rest of the tree? Do you want the sky? Do you want the campus? Uh, in this case, I wanted to have some other seed pods in the frame. Uh, what aperture do you want to use to get the desired depth of field? You don't want the stuff in the background to be too uh, blurred out, but you want it to be, you, you still want to draw the viewer's attention to something. So you have to decide on the aperture to use. And where do you want to draw the viewer's eye? So there's all these things to consider as you're, you're taking a photo like this. And I tried a lot of different iterations of this photograph from a lot of different angles. And I think I tried it over the course of maybe two days. Like maybe I... If I remember right, I think I came back the next day and photographed again. I don't know how many actual photos I took, but uh, I, I would guess maybe two dozen, maybe 30. In this particular photo, though, the first thing you see is the big bright red pod. And that was I tried to do that intentionally to draw your eye immediately to the big bright red object in the on the left hand side. And then as you take in the rest of the photo you start to see these other things the leaves and the uh, directly behind it and then in the background you see two other pods and they're kind of orangey yellowish and hopefully if if i've done my job right hopefully you start to make the connection that this big bright red pod is related to those other two things back there and then maybe you'll start to get the sense that it's a more um, decayed version of what you see in the background and, and it kind of all pulls together like that Hopefully, that was my intention. I don't know if it came across or not, but that's what I wanted to have happen. Um, hopefully, in this photo, one thing I want to do is create a sense of context in 3D space. I wanted there to be a sense that things were taking place more than just at the uh, on the focal plane um, where the, the big red pod was, that there's more depth to it. There's more physical depth to the photo. And as you look back, you can see things receding into the distance. Something about this photo isn't quite right. The The coloring is a bit off, and I don't know exactly what that is. It, it seems to have a bit of a dull tint to it. I messed around with it a little bit in post, but as I've mentioned on, on these uh, podcasts before, I don't like to do too much editing in post. I want to get the photo to look how it looked to me when I took it. But you know what? That's okay. Uh, photography shouldn't be about technical perfection. It shouldn't be about always adhering to the rules and making sure everything is exactly right and spending hours editing each photo and post, it shouldn't be about that. In my view, photography should be about creating a pleasing image and maybe one that tells a story, maybe one that has a sense of history to it. But as long as what is in the mind of the photographer is captured on film, then you've done your job. And I think I've done my job in this photo, and I, I hope it comes across that way to you.